now. And my name is Ernest Flagg. I hold a Master's in Public Administration. I am also a licensed registered nurse. For years I've owned and operated numerous residential facilities caring for uh, various populations such as the medically fragile, traumatic brain injured, um, uh, developmental, the developmentally disabled. Uh, we all have also cared for uh, special populations such as uh, sex offenders um, and uh, aging out youth that would be between the ages of 18 and 25 specifically. This video is on uh, the basics of how to start an adult foster care home, uh, personal care home uh, in any state. So irrespective of uh, where you are, uh, these, these basic rules that we will cover uh, will be applicable. Below are some links in which you can uh, go to our website at www.startafosterhome.com where you will be able to obtain our pre-written program materials that you can uh, download and, and, and modify instantly um, and, 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 and make it relevant to uh, your particular community, your, your state, and your licensing environment. The program materials are well written so uh, and easily modifiable, so go check them out. There's also another link uh, should you desire free consultation for starting an adult foster care home, child care facility, home health, home care agency, or durable medical equipment supply company uh, in any state. That link is also below, and that would be www.flagassociates.com. Again, that's www flagassociates.com to obtain free consultation for starting your own uh, free phone consultation specifically for starting your own adult foster care home, child care facility, home care, home health agency and uh, it's a 30 minute consultation you just have to get on there schedule it and uh, you will someone will call you back uh, within 24 hours to uh, discuss uh, your, your, your business concern this uh, particular video will be on the basics for starting an adult foster care home or personal care home in any state and we're going to deal pretty much with some questions that we, we, we received and have randomly and we just, we've just selected some maybe 10 of them that we'll go through very quickly and on the phone with me now is, also, is Frederick and he has been with me for many years and um, in, in this resident in business development, uh, healthcare business development, but also in running and operating facilities, and he will weigh in on uh, some of these questions just to make sure we give you the best information possible uh, for starting a facility and help keep your eyes open because uh, it's not, while it is something that can be done, many people uh, go in it blindly or at least going in with not enough information so that they can, you know, the help, not enough the right information so they can run that business on a day-to-day basis and run it in the most smooth, uh, smooth manner possible. Well, again, this is a very, this is a very closed entity. A lot of people that come into this business and become successful uh, in this industry don't, you know, easily go out telling people how to come into this business. And that's what one of the things we're going to do here is kind of help you break. We're going to break that particular cycle with this with this first video, and kind of give you uh, some very important information right here and right now. There will be more videos to come, which will uh, kind of shed light on different aspects of this whole the whole industry, the ins and outs, the politics of the industry, but also more specifically. Uh, what you can do to get in the industry and how and solid information you can use to get your business up and running and running it successfully. The first question that comes about is uh, do I need to form an LLC uh, or corporation and, uh, and and I say yes you definitely need to surf, uh, set up one or the other. Um, LLCs I find to be better because uh, if you have a uh, if it's just one individual or two individuals that form a partnership, LLCs tend to be 
uh, much better in that instance. You don't you don't have shares. You're not giving out uh, dividends. Or your business doesn't have shares. Uh, LLC tends to be the uh, the best route to go. It affords you the um, I would say the uh, liability protection that a corporation uh, affords you. That if you set it up properly, you'll get that liability protection. If you set it up properly and run it properly, uh, but it also has another advantage of one taxation. So you're only taxed at, at, the, at the company level, whereas with the corporation, the S corp or the C corp, you're taxed at both the corporate and the in the individual status. So your personal taxes are taxed and you're also taxed at the corporation status. Um, it is also important that you set up an employee identification number or EIN number. That is done through the uh, IRS website. You can apply on uh, through the IRS website and obtain an employer identification number. It's critical that you have one of those and that it separates your, it puts you in a position where you don't have to use your social security number and it's part of the, the proper setup of a corporation or company status as well in, in, in moving and shifting all the business matters away from uh, your personal, you know, away from your social security number, away from yourself. So in properly setting up a company or corporation, you will need an EIN number and an LLC and or corporation or C status. Did, was there something you want to weigh in on that at all? No, I think you covered that clearly. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll just uh, emphasize the importance of the governing body of the LLC to be quite active in um, organization functioning. Exactly. Ex exactly. And I have a great relationship with that administrator. Okay. Also, I would I want to talk about uh, corporate identity. Um, you know, numerous times we have seen individuals start out a business. They lack a website. They lack a business card. They lack a brochure. But in this particular environment, competition is very uh, rigorous, and I would say that that is very important to be professional and to have a well written. Bro I'm sorry, a well-written brochure, business card, and also a website presence, um, because it, it 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 gives that added level of professionalism to help you get in the door and secure those necessary contracts for uh, placement. Would you Would you agree, Frederick? I agree with that strongly, and that the preparation of a uh, identity forms should be done professionally so that they're visually known for content precisely written but it's visually attractive. Okay. okay. Because the way it's that defines the company. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's a, a person that write, wrote in and he asked about, uh, can you, uh, what is an administrator hierarchy and can you speak to um, what it might include, why, what is it and how does the administrator uh, include it in that, an administrative hierarchy he asked about, or organizational hierarchy.
Exactly. So the administrators like the liaison between the staff and the board of directors, but also the administrator does uh, all the communication with the related agencies, government agencies, placement agencies. Okay. Now, another guy writes in about location. He asks you know, can you speak to the location and give us an idea, give me an idea as to why a location, you know, what locations might be better over others and why is location even relevant, he says, in selecting uh, an area for a group home or personal care home. And I'll weigh in firstly, I and mean, then you can come in, but Fred, I think the, um, I, I want to say to, to, to our viewers that I myself will not live anywhere nor will I place my loved one anywhere. And you as a prospective business owner or prospective group home or personal care home owner should be very cognizant or conscious of, at least conscious of where you select this location because the primary concern for placing an agency and if I'm placing my loved one is safety and the quality of the staff. Now, the quality of the staff and definitely the quality of the community. A lot of residents will not have cars, so therefore they will be uh, enslaved to walking, you know, bike riding, and you want to have a community that be, have them in a community in which they're, they're, they're safe pretty much. They can go to the store, they can go to the library, they can stand at the bus stop and, and, and you know, and pretty much carry out, you know, whatever you know, life event they need to carry out. So the community is very, very important. And, and agencies are likely not to place or reluctant to give out contracts or place the facilities where they feel there's a risk of safety. And the other issue is comfort and convenience and secure. And do I feel secure? So what about the residents? How do you think they're going to feel in a certain community? Okay. Okay. Cover it well there. Uh, it should be um, safe, and it should be an area where the residents and their representatives and family members feel that it will be safe and okay. secure. Now, uh, Frederick, another writer writes in, and he says. Can you, can I just go to the, can I just go to, he says, and read, I'm reading emails and people email type very differently with emails. He says, can I just go anywhere to get furniture or will any furniture do? I mean, there's a resale shop, you know, there's some resale shops out here where I can get furniture from and do, oh, why does my house, can I go anywhere to get furniture, uh, you know, even from this resale shop up the street? And why does my house have to be fully furnished before I get licensed? Uh, when the consultant comes here to inspect the home, they are inspecting not just the floor plans, but the living environment that the residents will be uh, living in. And so it's important that they see what type of environment you're creating. Right. You have, have uh, comfortable, clean furniture. Mm -hmm. that's, that's essential. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, freezers and store, and frozen goods. That's essential. And downside, so, and the downside. I have to be making multiple site site inspections. You know, and one, Frederick, I'll say one downside to the resale shops is, is grabbing those beds because, you know, while you definitely need to have the room set up, you know, many of the licensing environments require that you have every room set up, the entire house, including prepared, including food in the refrigerators, prepared as if, you know, you were ready to accept patients or, I'm sorry, residents that particular day. So if they come out and they're licensing that house, you know, they want to see furniture in that house, 
and they want to see you ready to go that day. Down to having food in the refrigerator for so many months as well, right? Thermometers and refrigerators, and uh, the food dated, like you said, thermometers in the refrigerator or thermostats to gauge the temperature of the freezer, the temperature of the refrigerator. Um, they but they want that house ready to go. So I'm trying to answer this guy's question now. The downside to the use of, you know, resale shops. We like resale shops. We use them regularly with our facilities, Fred. But we wouldn't buy, one thing we wouldn't do with the resale shops is buy mattresses from them. We would not get those mattresses from those resale shops. Why didn't we get them? furniture you can have mismatched furniture because that's likely to be what the case is if you're going to a resale shop you're not likely not going to be able to get a twin bed that match or what you know what not but you can closely match them because you want the place that's pleasant uh, as, as as aesthetically pleasing as possible and, and mismatch this and that to a great extent can be unappealing so you really you do want to try to get some of the stuff to match and to strategically pick the stuff and definitely get quality stuff. I'm not going to really knock a resale shop because I think it's advantageous and not just resale shops, uh, yard sales as well, Frederick. Yeah, you select what you have back in retail shops. Uh, maybe not want to get the bed from the resale shop, but the chest and drawers, the uh, chairs, you know. I would uh, strongly urge you the mattresses for the bed. One guy, yeah. okay, one guy writes in about staffing. He asks, can you guys speak about staffing? He says, you did respond in one email, he says, but he says it wasn't enough information. He says, can you go in and just give me some solid information about my staff? business. 
I know a lot of times we may need to start out that way. We may need to, you know, start out that way just simply to pretty much get the wheels turning on our business. But for various reasons, I, I don't like to work with family in a business environment because, you know, that can make for bad blood and bad business. Yes, I guess the same principle that that same principle applies to where if you are a uh, renting property, it's not advisable that you rent out property to family members. Because the same problem that you'll have there could be applied to, you know, running a business. And 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 my and, and you know and and, and, and and Frederick, we can go into this. My person, my personal experience. I mean, I've had. There's. I know all family members are not alike, but I had some family members uh, employed. You know, at my business, Frederick, you 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 ran the business. You served as the manager uh, for the business for me, and an administrator, and in some capacity as well. What problems did you you might have? Did you run into any problems when you? Uh, dealt with any of my family members that might have been, you know, how did you see that? Did you run any peculiar situations when, you know, dealing with my family? You know, when I had, uh, say, two brothers employed at some of our facilities around, you know, around the way? Yeah, well, one of the brothers that did not want to preserve the hierarchy, but they were working under someone, they felt that because you were a relative, they only had the answer to you. And also that can create problems where the other employees uh, and assume, or assume, they assume nepotism exists. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they can't do it wrong. And then some of us can get confused because someone is, let's say, or is your brother, but that person can give instructions to a staff person. Right. And I can remember some of those, uh, some of those emails coming over, and some of that, some of that conversation in language as well. I can, I can, I can remember that. Um, I, I really can remember that. The another writer. The reprimands, the reprimands come down. And they may feel that they don't have to get a reprimand because you know verbal or written reprimand. Frederick, there's another question here. He asked about background checks. The writer has said, uh, and we're going to close this one up in, in a couple of minutes, uh, Fred. He asks about background checks. Yes, he asked about background checks uh, starting out. Do I really do I need to get background checks for everybody? You know, uh, everybody in uh, in my business. Exactly. He has to, has to do criminal background checks on the owner. Criminal background check has to be done on the owner, all of the uh, employees. And those criminal background checks generally are done by a third party agency where they do fingerprints. And those fingerprints uh, are given to this agency where they check the state and also for the nation. If they have been found guilty of any offenses that in the felonies that exclude them from working in those in a community residential setting. Frederick, there's another guy here. He asked, Do you think about what's the best to rent a home or to purchase a home? I would I would weigh in on that, and I would say in many instances we did purchase homes, we rented some of the facilities, uh, we leased I'm sorry leased a lot of facilities, and we it depends on the you know depends on your money, 
but it also, you know, in this environment, is is pretty good. The real estate is down, and, and currently leasing a property, uh, I think, is, is is a great way to go because there's some advantages of that. Particularly if you write the right kind of language in the leasing agreement that allows for modifications of the facility, such as handicap rails and, um, you know, handicap. I'm sorry, handicap rails and wheelchair accessibility ramps. Uh, on the facility, you know, I think that that can be an advantage because you don't have, your credit is not involved in that as much as buying a facility, and if you want to get out of it and walk away, that option still is there with not, without as much burden or uh, liability as if, if you bought a house. And also, you know, with that lease piece, particularly in this uh, environment, the leasing can be more advantageous in the sense that there's less startup money required. No down payment, little to no down payment, and way less startup money than the purchasing of a home. Yep. And as well, if you get, get it written into the lease that you, uh, you get first rights of purchase so that no one else could come in buy the facility and then put you, you know, out of business or, you know, put you out of business uh, that next day. I guess I agree. So, and go ahead, Frederick. And also on the lease, yeah, very uh, significant to make a look at what's in the lease agreement, what as uh, leases, they're responsible for paying, you know, Now, so that's something that they have to read closely into that lease agreement. Exactly. Exactly. And the repairs on the uh, building. That's something else that they have to make sure that there's a language so it just don't enter into the lease agreement. Blindfolded. You know, think specifically what, as a lease, you want to cover in addition to your monthly lease payment. Right, right. Because a lot of them have, you know, the uh, property insurance, you know, so there's a lot of considerations with that lease. They should make closer that they what's included in that lease. I know, Frederick, some states, this gets to another person's questions, but <clears throat> some states require that you obtain a um, permit, you know, you have to apply for a permit. I know Georgia requires that you apply for a permit um, through the Department of Community Health in effort to open up a group home. And I know in many instances that's not the case. Uh, it's just uh, like in Michigan, I know that's not the case in Michigan and else and in many other states where you just go directly through the state and the local, the city or local government is not, uh, you know, involved, but, uh, you know, you do have to, you know, some places they do require you apply for a permit, submit what's called your personnel policies, your um, uh, your LLC papers, your EIN number, and they want full and comprehensive personnel policies, uh, you know, to be submitted with that, and as well as an inspection of the home. Um, we we had again, Fred. This is a video. We're going to be wrapping up very shortly in less than five minutes. But this video is about starting a foster care home, personal adult foster care home, personal care home, a group home in any state. Uh, can you? I want to close by asking you two questions, Frederick, that you might be able to uh, to help illuminate some of the steps and obstacles that a person may need to watch out for. Uh, today we inspected an individual's facility. We did a pre-walkthrough inspection for this individual. Uh, he wanted us to come in and during the pre-walkthrough inspection, for those who don't know, we would, uh, we're hired through, uh, through our company and we would go out and inspect the individual's facility in advance of 
the licensing agent agency and provide this individual with all the uh, issues and problems uh, from a legal perspective that we would see uh, before uh, the licensing consultant comes out there. So we're this guy's eyes and ears. We're doing a walkthrough and we're going to tell him every possible thing that could possibly stop him from getting uh, licensed, him or her licensed. Okay, we did a walkthrough inspection today with an individual and Fred, can you kind of elaborate on some of the uh, worthwhile talking about things that you might have seen in this pre-walkthrough inspection with this newcomer? This guy was a newcomer to the block, had not been in mental health, you know, before. So can you elaborate a little bit? with the windows that they were painted uh, they were painted sealed and they couldn't be open they freshly painted them but they couldn't be open some of the windows were missing screens and if that resident wanted to open the window up for fresh air he couldn't open it up for fresh air and he would definitely need a screen there to shield from outside elements these are all licensing requirements that you're talking about but also that there's a lock on the door uh, you kind of in the lock itself would allow the resident to lock the door and bar out staff, which is forbidden. also uh, couldn't understand why the resident would be walking up the uh, street to, the, to go to the store. Where's the staff member, right? Yes. So he didn't That's understand right. about the rights of a resident. Uh, you know, in its early days. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because we couldn't, we couldn't afford a, a resident. We couldn't afford, I'm sorry, we couldn't afford staff members. You know, and we definitely, then we were so uh, gung-ho about not allowing, you know, family to be part of it because it was early on and, you know, you didn't, we didn't want to have that level of conflict in a new starting business. Another part of it is we knew we we knew our family, or at least I knew my family. I you know uh, the ones that wanted to, the ones that needed the job the most, and you know I just felt that it was best for them to work elsewhere. It's also so essential for the young provider to take the training, so they're familiar with the language and know those rules, so that when they're communicating with the licensing consultants, that they are engaging in a conversation with the consultant where the consultant is convinced that the provider knows what he or she is getting into and what he or she is going to be the quality of our services that's going to be delivered in their home. And, and you know, you know, Fred, one one thing we did notice today that this guy was so um, you know, he had not read the licensing rules, the basic licensing rules, you know, he had not even read them, which was, which was insulting, which was very disappointing, you know, and which says a lot about how he, how he will conduct his business. You know, they're buried that the Bible or the guide or the roadmap to running this business, you don't even know the basic rules. You haven't taken, taken the time to uh, review the rules so that you can become, you know what I'm saying, you can run your place and be knowledgeable of the, you know, of the parameters for which you need to work within. So I was disappointed to see that. I was knocked off my feet when he told me he thought he was ready. He thought his facility was ready. He said, oh, man, I thought I was finished. You know, I thought I was ready. But he was not, you know, and there was a lot of little things that, not a lot of, there was a lot of things. This guy had a, we found, we found every bit of 50 different items, you know, from, you know, you know, 50 different violations that this guy, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, had and would, would have been stopping him from licensing his facility. Well, I think I also, when you were speaking of another state, in some states, I think in the state of Georgia, they require uh, some of the home providers to get permits from their local... Yeah, it's actually the, de the, de yeah, the Department of Community Health, yes. Georgia Department um, of Community Health. And then they also indicate in those rules that it may be necessary for additional inspection. in addition to what the state requires to get the license, but to get permits from the local, from certain local areas, I guess, for those, if those cities or towns have certain ordinances about personal care homes. That's in addition to what the state requires. You know, like uh, maybe in Michigan where you were telling me about something that go before the felony commission. Right, right, right. In that, in that county, getting the permission to uh, start a home in that particular neighborhood. Yes. Because I think the state requires a fire inspection, electrical inspection, you know, uh, you have gas inspection for that. The state requires that and it requires proof that you have those inspections documents to prove that those have been done before you open up. Hey, uh, Frederick, I want to uh, thank you for chiming in on this, uh, on this uh, video and uh, helping me get some of these uh, questions answered. We're going to do another one down the line, and I hope you'll be available. Uh, again, my name is Ernest Flagg. That was Frederick on the line. He's 
uh, an icon in, 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 in this particular industry. He knows a whole lot. He's worked with me for many years. I always have to have him uh, roll out with me on this and help make sure I give you the very best information uh, so that you can make the most uh, the, the most informed decision uh, with uh, operating your personal care home, adult foster care home, or group home, irrespective of what state you might be in. Again, we got a couple of links down below. If you want free pro, if I'm sorry, if you want free consultation uh, for starting your own adult foster care home, home health, home care agency, or durable medical equipment supply company, I encourage you to visit www.flagassociates.com www.flagassociates.com Should you desire... And maybe you should emphasize that flag with two G's. That's flag with two G's. Associates, <laughs> right. Associates with an S on the end. And if you need pre-written program material, uh, please visit pre-written -pre program material for starting an adult foster care home, child care facility, I'm sorry, adult foster care home, personal care home, or group home in any state, please visit www dot start a foster home dot com again that's www dot start a foster home dot com and we'll see you soon.